How's it going everyone? Grant Henry here with Rise Magic. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm excited to bring you one of my favorite things to teach and my favorite things to actually do, and that is one-handed cuts. Now, I love one-handed cuts. It's something that I did all the time in college while I was uh, writing papers or doing math problems. That's honestly why I got really good at them. The unfortunate part about that though is that I wasn't able to practice it with both hands, and so I'm a lot better with my left hand because I was always doing one-handed cuts in my left hand while I was writing my papers and uh, doing physics equations. All of that is to say that I am excited about these tutorials and I'm excited about what we're gonna be doing here today. Let's get right into it. So, the Cartier cut. For most magicians and most cardists, this is usually the first one-handed cut that people use. It's extraordinarily simple, it's easy to learn. I hope that none of you will have too many issues with it. So, you're going to initially start out this cut in the straddle grip, just like this with your first finger on the top of the deck, your pinky finger at the bottom of the deck, your middle and ring on the opposite side of the deck and your thumb here. You're gonna have in this grip with the cards a good bit away from your palm. You're not gonna have them in your palm like this where you can hold them pretty tightly. You're gonna have them raised up away from your palm so that you have room for the cut to actually happen. When you're starting this out, you're actually gonna take your thumb right here on the side of the deck and you're gonna slowly lift your thumb to where it's about only making contact with about half the deck. So you have that room right there. So you're gonna slowly lift it up, then you're gonna release pressure with your pinky and your first finger, kind of just letting that drop down like so. This bottom packet will then almost solely be supported by your pinky finger resting right here. Now it is possible to do it without your pinky finger resting there. If you're holding it straight up and down, just like this. So your pinky's not really in the way and you can still perform the cut. But as you're beginning, I like having that pinky there just to kind of keep the cards square and to give them some balance. Once you lift up that thumb, let those cards fall. You're gonna have this pointer finger right here removed away from the deck. What this pointer finger will actually be doing as you're holding up these cards with the base of your pinky right here. You'll be using your pointer finger to take this bottom part of the cards and push up on them until it makes contact with your thumb. Now, this is the part where a few people will get uh, caught up on because this top packet is still over top of the bottom packet, even though it's making contact with your thumbs. That's okay. That's kind of the way the cut works. What you're gonna be doing to counter that is pulling back with your ring and your middle finger to allow space for gravity to pull that away, just like so. I'm gonna try to get a better angle of that for you guys. It's gonna make contact, you're just gonna kind of let the cards fall away from your thumb and over that bottom packet. And that's where the cut's gonna actually happen. Showing that one more time, let them fall, push them over, and you're gonna let gravity fall by pulling away your middle and ring finger. After that happens, you're gonna use your middle and ring finger to push that bottom portion or the top portion that has become the bottom packet up to the top one. Squaring your cards back up and making that cut. Do it one more time. Now, another way you can close this is by just letting it fall on top. It's kind of up to you. If you keep on doing a lot, you can get pretty good at it. And you're just gonna do it over and over again to really practice that and get it right. Now, that is the Charlie A cut. I have a lot of fun with it. It's a nice little fidgety cut to do. It is one of the essentials that you guys should be learning if you want to be getting into cardistry. Now that we're done with the Charlie A cut, we are gonna be moving on to the older brother to it, the Revolution cut. Let's get into it. All right, so the Revolution cut. The Revolution cut is extraordinarily similar to the Charlier cut. It's gonna be performed with the same grip, the same type of thing is happening where you're just switching the ones. But in the motion of bringing down that top uh, packet, you're gonna be doing a nice little spin with that top packet, giving a little extra pizzazz and fun. Now we do actually have a tips and trick video already on the Revolution cut. You can see it in the cards right here. Chandler did this video, and uh, as a lot of you pointed out, Chandler does the revolution cut very a little 
differently than most people do. It's not a wrong way to do it, it's Chandler's own way. So I'm gonna be teaching my way, I do it a little bit differently. I feel like the way that I do it is a little bit more mainstream, but I would recommend that you check out Chandler's video just to get a different perspective and to see how someone else does it if you are having trouble with this flourish. Getting right into it. We are gonna start off the same exact way that we did with the Charlier cut. That will be in this kind of straddle grip, keeping that distance between your palm and your uh, and the deck by keeping the deck above these top little bits of your finger or as high as possible. So what you're gonna be doing is dropping, is lifting up your thumb until it's in contact with about half the deck, just like we did in the Charlier cut and letting them drop, letting that bottom packet be supported by your pinky finger on the bottom of it and letting that first finger kind of hang loose. It's not really doing anything. You can have range of motion with it. You can be doing little finger curls. If you had a weight, have fun with it. But this, after this point is where the flourish gets a little bit different. I'll go to this direction. After this initial point of the flourish, you are gonna be transferring your grip from your middle and ring finger to your middle and first finger. After you let that packet fall, you have your first finger around, but you're gonna transfer this top packet to being held up no longer by your ring and middle finger, to being just held up by your thumb and your first finger. So you're gonna kind of out like this. Your thumb and first fingers are solely responsible for holding this deck while your, ring, while your pinky finger is responsible for keeping up this lower half of the deck. And your two fingers right here with your ring and your middle are free to just kind of wobble around. Now, as you're gonna be making the revolution right here, you are gonna be bringing your ring finger up to make contact with this bottom packet and push the bottom packet until it is all the way touching your thumb as close as possible. And you're gonna kind of, your ring finger is naturally gonna be kind of going in between this bottom packet and the top packet as your first and thumb are kind of rotating it out of the way by bringing your thumb in towards your ring finger and your, pink, and your uh, first finger is coming closer to your thumb. Now I'm gonna do that again just for explanation's sake. Drop. Your first finger should be as far to this side as possible. The farther it is over to this corner, the easier the revolution will be. So as you go forward, your ring finger will come up touching this deck, pushing it towards your thumb, and will get in between this top packet and the bottom packet in this little uh, triangle right here. At this point, you're gonna be transferring that, that uh, pressure on the side of the deck from your thumb to your ring finger. And you're gonna be letting your thumb kind of fall back and out of the way. Now you're gonna continue that revolution by pushing your ring finger forward towards your middle finger and bringing your uh, first finger up towards your thumb, pushing up this bottom packet with your first finger at the same time until you eventually get very close to touching your thumb and your first finger. Now, once you're at that point, you can bring your first finger down, which will naturally take that uh, top packet along with it, making it now be the bottom packet, and you can close the cut. I'm gonna do it just one more time for you guys because you can see that in slow motion. Let it fall, transfer that first finger and thumb. Begin the rotation by bringing your thumb in towards your ring finger, transfer that grip, continue the rotation, and let it fall one last time. Drop, transfer to the first and the thumb. Begin the rotation with your thumb and your first finger. Bring that ring finger up in between the two packets. Bring your ring finger down towards your middle finger and drop the packet. And that is the revolution cut. It does take a little bit to get used to. I would recommend while you're like listening to music, doing something, just practicing that over and over again until that revolution becomes very knacky and you can really just feel the flow of that whole thing going together. Once you get it, it is very satisfying to just feel the flow of that packet moving and it no longer becomes a bunch of steps, but one fluid motion and it's very impressive. I hope you guys enjoyed that and we'll be moving on into the scissor cut. The first thing that you'll be doing with the scissor cut is holding it in the same type of grip as we did for the other two. We're gonna be holding it very high up in your hands, a lot of space between the palm and the deck. Now. The only variation to this will be that you are gonna be holding on a lot harder with these two fingers right here. 
So you can kind of have that deck just kind of really balanced there with these two fingers. <clears throat> now, the ring finger and the middle finger will be used to kind of support it and keep the deck square as you move your thumb away and hold the deck like this. Now, once you have the deck in this grip, you're gonna be taking your thumb, pulling down at about halfway through the deck, inserting your thumb in there just to separate those two packets. Once those two packets are separated and your thumb's in between them, you're gonna bring your thumb over close to your pinky on that same corner. Now, after you get to that point, you're gonna grab on with your thumb and push. Now this is where it will get a little bit tricky. A lot of people will drop cards at this point because you have both your pinky and your thumb putting pressure on the same uh, portions. However, your pinky is solely responsible for holding up this bottom portion and your thumb is responsible for holding up this top packet. Now, unlike the Cartier and the Revolution cut, you don't wanna drop this packet down. It'll make the rest of the cut very difficult to accomplish, although it is still possible. Now, the easiest way to transfer from having your thumb there is to kind of pull up with your thumb or push up with your thumb while pulling down just a little bit with your pinky. It should give you enough separation to where you can make this move happen. I'm gonna try to show you the guys that again. I'm gonna bring your thumb in there. You're gonna pull down a little bit with your pinky just to get that separation. And you can have those two packets separate where the top one is being supported by your thumb, the bottom one supported by your pinky. So once you get to that point, you're gonna take that top packet and use your first finger to rotate it. Now, a lot of people will try just to keep their pinky in the same space and rotate with just their thumb. That will, especially if you have small hands, that will be very difficult to accomplish this move by doing that. The best way is to not just focus on one of your, one of your fingers, but by using both of them. So while you're pulling out with your thumb, you're also gonna be pulling back with your pinky finger so that you have less distance to cover with each of your digits. So I'm gonna show you guys that one more time. Just like that. Now, I accidentally grabbed the card there. I got caught on it. That will happen to you guys sometimes, but it'll happen less as you do the move. Just like that. Now, if you are paying close attention, you will notice that while I'm performing this cut, as I'm doing this rotation, both out with my pinky and my thumb, you'll notice that my pinky, not, not my pinky, you will notice that my ring and my middle finger are pulling down on this bottom packet as it's clearing. This will rotate the packet on its axis here, allowing it to make clearance with this packet. Now this motion with your middle and ring finger will make it a lot easier to bring that top packet below the lower packet, just like so. Now if I try to perform this move without using my uh, middle and ring finger, it will become very difficult because it's gonna be really hard to get that bottom packet above the top packet without losing some of the grip I have with my first finger on this packet. Now it's possible, but not really possible to do cleanly that way. Using those two fingers will allow you to not only keep that bottom packet really locked onto that first finger so you're not losing grip on the cards, but it'll just make it a ton easier. So if you're having trouble with the move, that might be something you wanna focus on doing. Now pulling down with those fingers, you can see a lot of this side of the of this packet is still on my first finger, giving me more control over the cards as I finish up the cut. Now, once you get past this clearance point, it becomes a very easy move to complete. You're gonna be bringing your thumb back in along with your pinky, essentially doing the opposite of what you did to get to that point, and you'll complete it. I will show you guys this move one more time so you can really see in slow motion what's going on. Thumb into the middle of the deck, Bring it to the bottom left corner, making that clearance with your pinky and thumb, rotating out with both your pinky and your thumb, pulling down with your middle and ring finger to create that space between the two packets, and then closing it back up, squaring up with your thumb finger, then you're back in your dealer's grip. So there you have it. Those are the three basic cuts that I believe you should know when you're starting out cardistry. If you have any questions about these moves, like I said before, leave them in the comments down below. 
I'll be perusing those comments for at least a couple hours after the video is posted to answer any questions that you guys have to the best that I can. Be sure to tune in next week because I'll be going over variations to these three one-handed cuts that you can use to make a cardistry. Just a little bit more flashy, pizzazzy. They're gonna be a little bit more advanced, but I think you guys will enjoy them. As well as those variations, I will also be going over a couple bonus one-handed moves that you guys can use to chain these one-handed cuts together and just have long, really cool combinations with these cuts. So if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to subscribe and maybe even hit that notification bell so you don't miss that video. But other than that, if you guys did enjoy this video, please hit the like button, it helps us out a lot. And other than that, we're done here today. I will see you guys in the next video. It's gonna be a good one. Peace.